God bless you and heaven smile upon you is my prayer. I'm Pastor Barry L. Ginyard, Jr., pastor of True Covenant Church, and this is Keys to the Covenant. Last week we brought to you our historical perspective, part one, and there we saw God speak to us through the prophet Todd Hall. We saw where God placed us in uh, Marvin's Garden Inn, and he began to bless us, and then the devil began to rear his head. But I want to encourage you to know that the best is yet to come. So without any further ado, we want to go right into part number two of our historical perspective. We began to look for, or actively get things in motion to, to find a building. And that's when everything just seemed to come undone. 80% of the church just walked away. No uh, explanation, no reason. Um, still smiling, still laughing, just walked away. In the midst of a very trying time, our church embodied the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 and 9. We were indeed perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Our hearts were fixed and our minds were made up. We were um, sustained by a blessing that God had given us earlier. Uh, and we thought, I thought we had weathered the storm and we were coming out. And then God really began to test my faith. And he said, uh, put your notice in uh, to the hotel. Upon signing the contract with Marvin's Garden Inn, Pastor Ginyard promised to give them 30 days notice of our departure. God said now was the time. However, there was one problem. We had no place to go. We didn't let that stop us though. We put our notice in and there had been a building that we had our, our eyes on for a little while now, a couple months, and we had been back and forth with the owners. They liked our offer, they didn't like our offer. Uh, they wanted to sell, they didn't want to sell. They called us to see if we were still interested. And um, then after we said yes, then they said that they didn't want to sell anymore. And so we kind of felt like we were being toyed with, but I still believed that God was going to make something happen. He was going to work something out there. And so we um, put our our notice in at the hotel. Uh, we set up, scheduled a rally service, and, and God blessed us, man. We raised over ten thousand dollars in that one rally service, and so we were uh, on a high going into this transition. On a high, we had money, we had um, our eye on a pl on a spot, and we were standing in faith that God was going to make that uh, available for us. Um, but that didn't happen, and so. Um, March the 7th, that first Sunday um, that we were out of the hotel, we had to have service in my house. Uh, we had service there two weeks, and I'm thinking, God, did I miss you? Um, what is this? Standing in faith often looks ridiculous. Even so, this was what we did, and God smiled on us. On Sunday, February 21st, 2010, God allowed the remnant of True Covenant Church, a group the pastor dubbed the 20 Percenters, to raise more than $10,000 in one Sunday morning service. However, our test wasn't over just yet. So we had service in my family room for two weeks, and I'm thinking, God, this is not working. Um, and he uh, brought back to my mind this building on Puritan. God had so orchestrated our movements that we were in lockstep with His will. Pastor Smith and New Life were moving into their new facility on March 21, 2010, and we needed a place to have service that same day. 
After a couple of phone calls and a few renovations, the way was cleared for us to worship at our new address. Just as it appeared that we had leveled off and we were positioned for elevation in God, it was time for yet another test. Without notice, the building was sold. We were told afterwards that we had to be out by March 31st, 2011. That gave us roughly five weeks to prepare. This is probably the part of the uh, our church history that um, in hindsight is the most uplifting. But at the time that I was going through it, it was probably uh, one of the hardest blows that I've ever taken. And I've taken some some pretty serious blows in this uh, this ministerial walk. But when we lost that building on Puritan, I um, was angry. I was I was upset because we did everything that we were supposed to do, and we should not have been in the situation that we were in. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to to make a viable move on the building. It was. It was done, you know, up under us, and, and, and we were forced out, and I was angry. Though unfairly handled, our pastor continued to preach and teach faith in God. Fully believing that God had better for us, he told us that spiritual character is built in times of testing. He said God sees what we are really made of when hard times come. Amen. So when, when we were in the midst of another shift, and I just believe. Yes, yes, yes. That this time it's going to be the shift that catapults us right. into the place that God, oh yeah, we, we might not be there by November. We, we, we might not be at our full potential by November, but how many of you know that when the ball starts rolling, yes. oh yeah, that's half the battle right there. Once, yes. once the ball starts rolling, then, yes. then there's no stopping it at that point. Yes. And I to understand that God is about to unleash some yes, stuff God. on you. I don't know why I feel this, yes, but I believe that God is about to unleash yes. some stuff yes. on this house yes. that is going to turn yes. things completely yes. In God's perfect timing, our change finally had come. Pastor Ginyard received a voicemail message on the same day service was held in his home. Upon returning the call, he was made aware of our current facility. God placed us in position to build the kingdom of heaven and impact Satan's kingdom like never before. So here we are on the precipice of uh, what I believe is the greatest move of God in our church history. He's taking us um, from the bottom to the top. In just a matter of a few short weeks, uh, he's taken me from one of my lowest points in ministry to probably my highest point in ministry. As our history continues to unfold, we are grateful. We are grateful for what God has done, what He is doing, and what He is going to do. Because quite simply, the best is yet to come. Well, as you can see, God has greatly blessed us. He smiled on us and he's shown us his favor. But I want you to be encouraged because God is not a respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he will do for you. What he's done in my life and in the life of our ministry, God will do in your life. I want you to hold on to your faith. I want you to know that God is by your side. Every step of the way, it doesn't matter how dark it might get, from your lowest point to your greatest point, God is always right there. Once again, my wife is coming and she's going to share with you an opportunity for you to be blessed in True Covenant Church. Who doesn't want a gift? It is time for our Empowered Women's Encounter and I'm so excited about our theme understanding the gift not the gifts of the spirit but the gift that God has given to us in us and what will and should come through us on Saturday May 5th at 3 p.m. will be geared towards our born a queen the young ladies ministry and they will be dressed in pearls and pumps and on Sunday May 6th at 4 p.m. our guests will be first lady and co-pastor Valerie Bennett from the house of prayer and praise 
Whatever your age is, you won't want to miss it. Come out and spend your weekend with us. Well, that's all the time that we have for today, but at your earliest opportunity, I want you to come and see us. We're down in River Rouge, Michigan, 200 Genesee Street, two blocks south of the intersection of Jefferson and Coolidge. I guarantee that God has something in store for you here. Come and see what God is doing in our midst. Come and be blessed. And until then, fight the good fight of faith and know that we have been empowered to be God's church and God's people. God bless you.